Hey everyone, welcome back to Metroid Dread Hard Mode Playthrough. Last time we beat up poor Kraid, <laughs> who is gone and we'll never see him again. And now we out. We're gonna die. Just kidding. <laughs> we were about to die though. <laughs> Literally 3 HP left. But uh, um, now we're gonna do something. I actually am not positive where we're going. Oh, we're in this hard area now, I remember. We're in this tough area that has. Uh, is that a help? Oh, yes, it is. What the? Okay, I thought for a second there I couldn't reach that. <laughs> Good. Held we fell. Anyway, we're in Dairon. I can't remember puzzle. We have to get bombs. I think that's what we have to do. We could have gotten them before being poor crate, but uh, now we're actually going to get them. And we're probably going to have to deal with uh, Gammy here. Yeah, we, we definitely will because uh, this is a new area. This is the speed boost one. It moves quickly. I do believe you are able to like... Uh... Crap, that's why these things make noise. Yeah, it moves pretty damn quickly, as some of you may have noticed right there. That being said, I do believe you can outrun it. Just barely. P possibly. Actually, no, I think it does move faster than you. So this is one of the more dangerous ones. God damn it! Counter! So I, I, I'm glad I was able to show that, what the counter is, when you have to deal with these things. Oh, come on! That stupid thing! Yeah, and I tried to counter early this time and I screwed up. But yeah, that thing, this is why I was supposed to hold up right there. I was actually initially trying to uh, reactivate my Phantom Cloak, but I forgot that you can't do that after deactivating it without waiting for it to refill completely. So that's something that, that was a mechanic I actually forgot about. But yeah, after my first dodge, I ended up getting to a dead, dead end. And because of that, I had to figure out a way to get past the Emmy again, which was heading back my way, but then I got caught by that stupid trap uh, on the way out. So that was annoying. But yeah, this is probably the first uh, time where we're in a tough uh, zone against the Emmy. It's gonna come over here because of the explosion. So if you look carefully up there, the, the meter is refilling extremely slowly. But as soon as I start uh, walking, then it refills quickly. So if you stand still, the meter is not going to refill for you. Wow, okay, that was kind of dumb. Counter again! Can I go here? No, I can't. I mean, I could, but... <laughs> Wouldn't have helped. Couldn't leave well alone, could you, you stupid thing? God damn it. Counter again. Uh, 
Uh, again? Yeah, they're too early. So yeah, in case some of you were hoping I would just keep uh, countering this thing over and over and over, it's it's just not reactable. Uh, the, the more you get caught, the, the more they, they uh, change the rhythm to when you have to counter it. The trick is not to get caught. Of course, now I know the way to the end, so it's not going to be nearly as difficult. Part of the reason why this was so difficult for me is because I didn't know where to go. I was supposed to go up here all along, but I kept falling down where you just got to get stuck. And actually, there's something right here. Can I get that? I want that. <laughs> Forget it. I want that. And I think it's at that dead end that I was supposed to get it. Oh, speed booster! Crap. Can I avoid it? Yes, I can. And it was detecting me right there, but finally I got out. So yeah, part of the processes here is that uh, you need to know when you can actually reactivate Phantom Cloak. Because I don't think the game tells you that you cannot reactivate Phantom Cloak after you've uh, used up some of your Aeon. So that's something you kind of got to learn through trial and error. Anyway, that thing looks pretty damn dead. Looks also it's about to be experimented on, but this whole area is actually shut down. That's what Adam was talking about. There's another generator we have to open here. Hmm. Can't do anything here, though. Probably because we need some kind of bomb. Hmm. So I guess we gotta go back through here. Or, hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Can I not go through here? No, I can't. Gotta wait until it's pretty far away, cause it's coming back. It's got a pretty like the the further you get into the enemy fights, the bigger the detection radius of the enemies become. Like I think the last one you fight, its detection radius is almost the entire area, so it always knows where where you are unless you have the phantom cloak activated. And that's a power bomb thing right there. We didn't get it, but you know. How do I get this thing? Bombs. Beginner enemies again. That thing in the center is looking at me. I'm sure some of you noticed, but uh, it's actually looking towards my direction.
need that. Can't do anything there, though. Still stuck in the same spot. Hmm. Can I shoot down, actually? Okay, just making sure I actually can't secretly secretly activate that all along. <laughs> yeah, I had to counter that because oh, this is a door right there. Didn't even notice. Anyway, I had to counter that creature's attack because that's how it would drop health. That looks like the Metro Prime 1 boss, the Parasite Queen. It might have been reference to it. Passage. And there's the thing. Generator number two. Oh, those areas are now cold. <laughs> so you shouldn't go there. <laughs> this whole area that we were going through was cold all along. So it's a good thing I opened that passage because uh, I wouldn't have really gotten the opportunity otherwise. Just please give me energy back. Energy is good to have. And I guess we have to go through here. Basically. There are even butterflies in the way. Oh, cool. Bombs. Well, yeah, you can get these bombs before fighting Kraid. Yep, gotta reveal the passage under. And now we can finally activate these things. And then there's these things. We fought one of them before. They're pretty tough. I wouldn't want to get hit by their blast, just saying. Hmm. Oh, we need grapple to get through those now. That would have killed me for sure. <laughs> the beam would have finished me off for sure. Oh, come on. Yeah, now we gotta go through here. And now this thing's being experimented on. Still looks pretty damn dead though. Is there something we can do over there? Yes, there is. We can go on another goose chase. For our save point. <laughs> we already got bombs. Now I think it's about time we got speed booster, if you all know what I mean. Exactly where we're supposed to go. 
God damn, how did that hit me? Good explosion. We're supposed to go through here? Yeah. I'm always so quiet during the aiming segments, aren't I? I talked crap about them before, like, getting to them initially, but uh, they're still not that bad. Just, they're not quite what I was expecting when the game was first announced. I was expecting the enemy to travel through the entire world, and I think they almost have the, like, the enemy themselves, they almost have the, um, uh, ability to traverse through the entire world, technically. It's just that it would take too much time to program the world. Like, you'd have to design the entire world with them in mind, too, and that would probably limit the exploration in a way. Oh, how did that stupid thing? Knows how to aim better than I? I don't think so. Not anymore, now that it's dead. Anyway, this area, transition area, looks really nice. I like the waves. And it still looks like we're in a ca cavern. But now we gotta go to Brurania, the water area. I actually don't think there's an enemy segment in that one area. Not sure, we'll have to just see. Actually, I think there is, but we're not going to encounter it yet. Constantly raining. Ow. Don't bite me, bro. Even the missiles can't do anything. And that thing wanted to attack me. You cannot wall jump uh, while you're in the water, by the way. You can't clean onto the walls and jump from those, though. Well, I guess I can, I can actually shoot it from here. But I'm pretty sure I was supposed to shoot it from uh, below. <laughs> anyway, this is actually the area where I feel the music is actually pretty nice. Wonder what that thing is. It looks like a giant robot. Can't open up anything though. Adam, what now? You know, it's awfully, awfully convenient that we can talk to Adam through all of these stations. This planet is weird. You will need your gravity suit to operate there at full efficiency. And it's not just an aura in this game, is it, Adam? Hmm? Abilities such as the grapple beam or space jump will help you maneuver underwater to an extent. Find them as soon as possible. Yeah, space jump, I believe it's just one extra jump when you're underwater until you get the gravity suit. Something like that. And wow. Those things devoured me alive. When I saw the flash, I thought, oh, I have to counter right now, but I was for way too far away to do anything about that. Anyway, good thing this is a save point slash checkpoint. Oh, 
Oh, come on. How? God damn, that thing is actually pretty tough to deal with. Could you please let me counter its face? Jeez. There. Jeez. Because I kept missing the counter. I can't believe I died to it, the thing twice. I don't remember at all from my normal mode playthrough. So, it being so much tougher in hard mode must be... Uh, because of the damage increase. Oh, come on. Like, I intentionally fail, but I want to get caught by that thing. go through here, but the power up up there, so I gotta go back. It was either that or missiles, or some other power up I would need later on. Obviously, once you get like the space jump and stuff, you can just jump through the whole thing, but uh, you gotta consider getting the power up as soon as possible, right? Some people will definitely want to. Man, I wonder how I'm supposed to go to the other side here. Probably because I need a special power-up for it. No! I wanted an energy tank! I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. Ah, oh, but I can't get it. Need a grapple beam or something like that. Problem here. Well, now I kind of want to go back. <laughs> What's in here? Ugh, just a save point. I guess I better save just in case. By the way, I do believe the game counts your debts. So I'll tally how many deaths I've got at the end. I think the only way that you can avoid uh, getting your deaths counted is if you reload after you die every time. Good thing there's this grapple thing right there. Oh no, I'm sinking, sinking underwater. And that thing hurt like hell. Look, that was 80 damage. If only I could get that thing right there. But no, I have to be a dumb dumb and just stay in the middle. Is that a shark in the distance? Right over there? I'm pointing at. Kind of getting closer. Uh, but now it's going away.
Well, if I want to get another chance to get that power up. Yeah, I can't get it from this angle. Far away. And when I say angle, I'm from this <laughs> ledge. No! Can't go through here. Gotta go up here. Finally can go through here. Is it boss fight time? No, it's Aeon ability time. <laughs> What's this Aeon ability, I wonder? It's actually one of the better abilities introduced in this game. The flash shift. Good for sequence breaking, good for combat, good for just moving around quickly. I think if any ability should come back in the next Metroid game, this is definitely one of them. So yeah, this is how it works. Pretty cool. It works. At, it works as an air dash too, so it's really cool in that way as well. You know what? I kind of want to get another attempt at uh, getting that thing. I, can I? No, I can't use it in the water. Yep, so you can get that missile. I had to get it. I know it's a kind of like a two minute, uh, waste of time to get back, but, uh, geez. Let me get my power-ups. Cannot dash three times in the same direction, by the way. I think. I think you can only dash one. Hold on. Okay, you can dash three times in the same direction. Never mind. Just, you have to be in the air, right? Die. Oh, come on, I almost had it. Uh, I don't believe you can use it as a. The Aeon shift while in Murph Ball mode, by the way. Yep. Energy! An energy part would be good too because uh, I've got three parts right now. Pretty sure that just returns me to where I need to go. So, we're gonna go there. By the way, remember that we got the Varus suit on? Those stains still deal 80 damage, or 90 damage, I want to say. So they would be dealing nearly two energy tanks worth of damage if uh, I did not have the uh, suit with me right now. 
There is a power up up there. Yeah, I'm actually gonna check out the areas here first because I know for a fact that as soon as I start destroying those things, the water is gonna start to going in, into those areas. So I think I have to do this one first. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I did like she did a new mistake here. I was sure that I would, she was gonna only fill at half, but no, it filled up completely. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. If you don't get this while the water is filling up, you will have to come back with the grapple beam or gravity suit plus space jump or something. Here, and then I can blow up. Oh, it's another transport. And since we're clearly supposed to be under water here, that's why we don't get a cool background in this, in this one. Let's check out the rest, however, just in case. Uh, we're just back here. Oh well. Let's just go back down then. Maybe now we'll deal with uh, that enemy over there. As I mentioned, it does not appear there is any enemy area in uh, the water place, Berenia. Where we're at. I don't remember any from there, that's for sure. If there is one, then it's uh, we only found out about it much later on. here does not appear to be the game doesn't say there's any secret so gotta assume that thing was waiting for me to try my counter annoying I got humiliated Well, I can't outrun it while in the water. <laughs> or maybe I can, I guess. Nope, caught up to me. And it killed me. Ugh. Underwater, the animation is slower, but that does not mean the timing for countering is any easier. The fact that it appeared right above me as I entered the area, though, is kind of lame. Yeah, see? This time it didn't spawn right above me. They're not nearly as frustrating to deal with it. L like, literally the moment I entered the area, I should have just retreated the moment I saw that it was appeared right above me. But it feels like... It, it feels more challenging and satisfying when you manage to do avoid it, right? Despite the odds being stacked against you. Speed booster for that. Um.
Where am I supposed to go? I guess all the way up there. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm gonna face the thing. Oh, come on! Yeah, see, right there. That was instantaneous, it uh, spawning the spike. Normally, you, you'd wait for it to, to reveal its uh, big uh, fl uh, flashing red dot head or something like that, but uh, this time, there was literally no warning for it. Okay, this time, this is moderately challenging. It appeared right above me, but not s literally on screen. Can't go through here or here, so it's supposed to go through here. No. Okay, I guess I was supposed to go through here. I didn't even notice the first time. I just went through over there. That thing starts shooting a lot faster now. Of course, you can also start using your normal beam when its uh, protective shell is exposed. Probably faster to kill it that way, too. Anyway, after several screw-ups with Yemi here, it's about time we defeat it. But this is the speed booster one. You probably cannot... Uh, defeat this uh, without doing it in the designated area because uh, it's too fast for you to do the the like doing the accumulative damage over time you, you, you just gotta go through the proper area and uh, deal with it there of course if you know better than me then go ahead and do it wherever you want Time to die. Okay, it was gonna catch me right there. Yeah, even if it's crouched and you destroy it, it's still gonna end up standing up. In fact, even if it's on the ceiling, crawling towards you, like this, as uh, if you hit it with a cannon, it suddenly stands up uh, wherever in the area and you destroy it there. Kinda of sucks that you can't destroy it in the uh, in game like that. That it has to go to cutscene, but whatever. Anyway, speed booster acquired, and that was one of the tougher Emmy variants. I feel the next uh, two, for instance, like the problem with the next two is that even though they're stronger, now at the point where we uh, eventually get to them, we have so many uh, tools at our disposal that it's a lot easier to avoid them. You know. Hmm. 
Well, now that we have the speed booster, I guess we're gonna go through here. And yes, you have you actually have, do have to activate the booster manually. And speed booster has a lot of uh, speed uh, run techniques associated with it uh, in this game. Not to mention, it's one of the harder power-ups to get evolves the speed booster, obviously. Like right here. We need a speed booster for this area. If I can do it properly. Well, I screwed that up again. You know what? We're actually going to do it later in the game. Because I'm going to die <laughs> in the attempts at this rate. Oh yeah, it's that thing, now I remember. God damn it. I'm gonna die. Does this thing refill my health? I think it's just my ammo. Yeah, that's a terrible design <laughs> for me. Because, like, the way you're supposed to use it, you're supposed to jump here, then jump like that, then keep going, then go under there, and then keep jumping over and over. Yes, give me energy. Oh, I lost the charge. So I gotta go back. But y'all, y'all see what I was doing, right? That's that's the, that's the strat. It's pretty hard to learn initially, but uh, it's not impossible. The problem is that uh, as soon as you hit the wall, you lose the charge. So hard to master, that's for sure. Whoops. That was my bad. Oh, uh, you know what? Might as well get a refill right here. I'm probably gonna have to cut out all this footage in the non-commentary version. As well as most of my attempts anyway. For this version too. There we go! Just have to get a bit more patient. <laughs> and not, uh... Panic so much. It's if as long as you're not finicky, this is not as hard as it looks. I feel. But yeah, the speed booster very very forgiving this game. On occasion, you get a cutscene for using the speed booster, but uh, it's all. Uh, Within the game's mechanics, there's no special boss and cutscene like that. Something like that. I don't want to go over there. Okay, we need a grapple beam for that. Uh. What? Well, that's power bomb. Where are we supposed to go, I wonder? <laughs> well, the game will actually practically guide us to the next area, actually. I do believe you can use flash hit or... Yeah, like that. Flash hit is great with uh, wall jumps, I feel. 
So even though they, yeah, right there. Even though they hampered wall jump to be more like uh, Fusion's wall jump, they still uh, managed to make it feel useful. Thanks to Flash Shift uh, allowing you to do some fancy stuff with it. out of the way. And... Still need grapple beam. up there. Oh, right, this is where we're supposed to... Yes! That's cool. And there's a yellow teleportal right here! This... Wh what did I say? The game likes to actually guide you to where you need to go next. And it's all because of these teleportals. This is why I mentioned earlier that these are, they feel a bit iffy for me because they feel all too convenient for directing you exactly where you need to go in the, the game's world. Because the world's, the world's not as cohesive as it should be, I feel, in this game. It feels a bit artificial. It's not, it's not Super Metroid's uh, interconnected world or Metroid Prime 1's. Actually, Prime 1's world is actually kind of interconnected poorly now that I think about it. Fendrana Gifts, for example, is only connected through the Magmore Caverns. <laughs> anyway, Arteria, we're back. And that was a one-way, by the way. <laughs> oh, what do you know? There's a speed boost thing right there. Where does that lead? Well, there's a yellow missile. I, a missile I didn't get over there. I might as well get it. Uh, well, it's connected. Whatever. Oh, what the hell? What are you doing here? Guess I can't do anything about that. Which means I'm stuck here. God damn it. This is still more inconvenient than I expected. Probably with flash shift I could do it. There we go. Give me. Um. You're not gonna want to talk to me, do you? good. I guess we have to go over there. I think I didn't see that. If you, if I had done the regular uh, speed boost, uh, well, I would not have found this. But actually, you just have to shoot down, so it's not that big of a deal anyway. Oh, do I have to speed boost here, though? No, I don't. Well, I kind of do. Going up the shaft uh, without a space jump or anything like that it might be a bit challenging. I'll do it anyway, though.
Man, I can't go over there. If only I could grapple to that other blue panel. Hmm. Whoops, I guess I'm stuck down here. Oh, what a convenience. The grapple beam. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a pretty memorable area to get the grapple beam in. I, I very distinctly remember in it for some reason. A ah, rope-like beam that can latch onto blue grapple points. Hold the R and press Y to fire. After latching on, tilt left stick in the opposite direction to pull object. So about grapple beam doors, grapple beam blocks, and grapple beam boxes. So, basically, you hold the R, it turns your arm cannon blue, and you start shooting this. Obviously, if you aim and press the R, the same thing applies. And that's pretty much the grapple beam. The most interesting thing about it is that it allows you to grab onto these panels, which makes them feel a little less uh, artificial and rigid in design. You know? Anyway, it's another elevator. We're going back up there exactly after being teleported down here. See what I mean about the teleporters feeling artificial? Why couldn't we use this elevator for getting down here initially? Now this I remember. This other area back here. I believe this is how you sequence break to get the grapple beam early. You come from this area over here to the left. And then you just go through here. And because you're from the elevator, you can just drop down to get the grapple beam real quick. And I do believe the developers accounted for that. And now we're up here. Come on. That's how you get back here. Hmm. Yes. Maybe have to go down here? I think we do. If nothing else, I might be able to show you guys something. And that is not what I want to do at all, actually. <laughs> Supposed to go down here. Might as well get a full refill. Okay, so when that thing has a full charge, then you can counter it. I do believe there's infinite bomb jump, by the way. Hmm. 
supposed to be a connection between these two areas, but I don't remember where it is. That's the problem. So I guess where else would we go? We got the grapple beam, so... I guess we go back to Berenia. Yeah, no. We're definitely heading in the right direction. I can get this right now. Ah, not quite. Crap. Well, this sucks. I have to shoot four missiles. There we go. Just have to flash shift a lot of times. That's one of the ways you can get this. I do believe the <laughs> proper way is actually different, but uh, we're not doing it the proper way now, are we? Power bombs for that. Okay, we can't do anything with that, actually. Ah, uh, yes, this is where we need to go. There is an item here. I think it's just at a random. Yeah, it's at a random spot in the ceiling. Come on. There we go. Come on. Energy part. been playing over over an hour but let's see where this leads us to a new area Florania sounds like a dangerous area just thinking aloud hmm looks like a temple area and yeah, you, you look at the the thing behind you right there, and it definitely feels like a last boss area, doesn't it? It's actually kind of nifty that way. Uh, no, I was supposed to wall jump, damn it. There we go. One other energy part. Here they want to make sure you got the grapple beam. And now, what Emmy are we gonna encounter here? Unless we see a cutscene with the Emmy, we assume we do not assume we will encounter the Emmy normally, by the way.
Oh man, seems we're stuck here and we have to go down this shaft. Cutting time! It's long cutscene time. Oh man, that makes Samus angry for some reason. And they don't say a word about it. Oh no! Purple? Was that the gravity suit? No, I think it's the wave beam. Indeed it is. And we got a QTE this? Or... No, apparently not. The thing was deactivated. And behind us lies... A Chozo! Quiet robe is his name, I believe. Because, see, he's quiet and he's wearing robes. Samus could have gotten up at least. This is the first for the franchise, by the way. Actually, talking Chozo in the games. Like, obviously, there was the manga where the Chozo talked quite a bit and the lore dumps from uh, the Prime series, but uh, this is the first time we actually get to hear them talk in their own language. Which I believe, because of uh, Mercury's team's uh, roots in. Uh, Spain? I think they're in Spain? I'm not positive, but uh, it's based on Spanish, I believe. Your language. This was a, a, a secret uh, illustration in uh, Simon's Returns, by the way. It got people thinking quite a bit about the future of the franchise back then. Obviously, Mercury's team already planned for this game, so that's why they put that there in Simon's Returns. Gathering Metroids, hmm? Unforeseen difficulty, huh? Maybe Metroid got genocided, hmm? Oh. That, that would actually be a problem <laughs> if one of your soldiers was an ex in disguise. Yeah, this is never explained how we're even being managed to contain the ex. He was just really badass, Raven Beak. Well, there was one left, but then uh, some space pirates decided to stop that. Me? Am I Metroid? Is that what you're trying to say? Indeed, because Metroid DNA to counter the X that was trying to infect us in Metroid Fusion. See, this is how you make a character who's usually silent to speak. 
Obviously, she spoke uh, in text uh, in Super Metroid and whatever, but uh, this just those two lines or one line, I guess, right there was more than enough better than proven than uh, what uh, other M was trying to do. Anyway, Berenia's area got slightly unlocked right there. Anyway, we've got a friend now. Oops, never mind, he's dead. And we have a fight to do. This is actually pretty decently challenging as well. Those things hurt like hell. Nope, can't dodge that. Can't parry that, I mean. Can't, could parry that, though. Yeah, to dodge that, you have to flash shift above them. Oops. Huh. You have a lot of health. There we go. The explosion does not damage you, but uh, <laughs> you gotta you <laughs> you can't be too careful around those guys. You fight them quite a few times too, so learn their pattern and learn them well. And I, I say them because you're gonna have to fight two of them at the same time from now on. Eesh. I know yet Quiet Rob is dead in the cutscene he was introduced, and yet he still remains popular because of how he's just straight up uh, a Chozo that gets to talk to you. Only other Chozo that's gonna do that with us is uh, Ravenbeak, and that's uh, for when we fight him later on. I was hoping for a health refill. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the path lays bare for us because the uh, game pretty much uh, outlined that we need to go to Berenia. Don't die to those stains, God. This is ice area. Just had to show. Oh, what is this? Oh, how do we get here? How? Well, actually, it's not that difficult. There we go. Took long enough. Probably like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh well. That's just how it goes sometimes. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, where we need to go because this was like a cutscene right here. So basically this was uh, like our early view of uh, Ferrania. Which is one of the late game areas, but now we're going back to day around in. I've been playing for almost an hour and a half, mostly because of uh, me spending so much time on that uh, uh, power up, speed booster power up, and there's uh, even tougher ones later in the game that I'm gonna have to get. But no worries, I already proved myself I could get them all once. I can totally get them again. Just not in the four hours. <laughs> I should probably properly speed run the game once. Probably in normal mode though. Yeah, maybe hard mode. I'll talk to Adam. And this will be a save point, so we'll stop here afterwards. So what do you gotta say to us about the uh, quiet robe, Adam? Hmm? Our profile friend has explained much. We now know why the enemy are pursuing you. Samus Aaron, Raven Beak Lord you here. He wants the Metroid DNA that exists only within you. Why does he call me Samus Aaron? Adam. You should call me Lady. You know, the the meaning sexist uh, nickname you got for me. The so quiet robe opened is in Berenia. Return there immediately. Yep. So Berenia is where we're gonna head next time. 
But for now, let's actually take a break. Hope you've all enjoyed this video and have a nice day. Bye-bye!